I want you to know that I just sat here and talked to you for about 10 minutes without my microphone on. So without this little doodad, this thing's not picking up any sound. So maybe I'll use some of that as a B-reel because I'm embarrassed. I'm a little bit frustrated. So that's a thing. Let's start over, shall we? Hmm. Love that. Hi. So I thought today maybe we could talk about books I want to read in 2021. And not just any books I want to read. Books that were on my 2020 list of things to read. Things I was really excited about. I was hoping to get to and it fully intended to read. And then I never got there. Now, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who uh, sets a firm TBR. I don't go, I'm going to read these five books in this month and next month I'm going to read exactly these. I'm not that kind of person. I'm very much a mood reader. There are some that I, I already owned or that I purchased in 2020 that I had every intention of reading that year. I'm still really excited about them. I, I actually have a, as most of us I'm sure do, have an owned TBR that's rather intimidating. But I've chosen seven books from that list to talk to you about today. These are the seven books that I am going to read in 2021, even if I meant to read them last year as well and didn't get around to it. But I really mean it this time. I mean it. The first one I want to talk about is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. Now this is an adult fantasy novel. We have a woman who, through magic, I am bad at describing books. If you haven't figured this out by now, you should have. Uh, and FYI for future reference, I try my best. I'm really bad at it. She, her f family ruled an empire and they've lost that empire. And she's been, from what I understand from the blurb, imprisoned from a lot of that time. And she, she just wants to win her empire back. Now, I'm just gonna read a little snippet here. Trapped in a palace of locked doors and secrets, Lynn is the emperor's daughter, but not his heir. Her childhood memories have been erased by a mysterious illness. The only way to reclaim her birthright and overthrow her despotic father is to master the art of the very bone shard magic that his subjects fear. See, I wouldn't have said anything like that. That's why we read what's inside these things, right? Now, this book came out in September of 2020 and I actually, I didn't see anything about it from much of anyone online. I didn't see it being featured anywhere, but a booktuber that I really quite like, Judith from Dead Good Book Reviews, started talking about this book pretty much constantly. Like she talked about it a lot. And, and you know, she was very excited to read it. It was, love the story. I think she got an arc of it that she liked. And it's, you know, I went and looked it up and it sounded magnificent. I, like I got hyped about it. Of course, then I bought it and shoved it on the shelf because that's what we do, right? But I really had every intention of reading this last fall, but I got into a really bad reading slump and didn't read much of anything there for quite a while. This is one I definitely want to get to in 2021. I am anticipating it being at least a four star, hopefully a five, but at least a four star. And I'm excited because it's an adult fantasy and I have been trying to step away a little bit from YA fantasy because I've not been enjoying it as much. So hoping to get to this one very soon. The next one on my list is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. Now this one, I'm not really sure why I wouldn't read it so badly if I'm being completely honest. I read Holly Black's The Cruel Prince trilogy. Not one of my favorites. Like there was so much potential for it to be an excellent series of books and I just didn't like it. I know a lot of people loved, absolutely loved them. I like the middle one, The Wicked King. But the Cruel Prince and the Queen of Nothing were not my favorites. In fact, I think the Queen of Nothing was one of my most disappointing reads the year that I read it. I don't, when did it come out? Was it 2020 or 2019? I don't remember. If you heard that, that was my dryer buzzing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> even though I didn't enjoy those, I wanted to give Holly Black one more chance. So I bought this lovely floppy paperback edition of The Darkest Part of the Forest. Now, a lot of people seem to really enjoy this. They enjoy it more than even the Cruel Prince trilogy. So I'm really hoping 
Maybe I'll like her, her fairy nonsense in this one. I don't know. I hope so. I wanted to read it last year because I got it really early in the year. Really want to get to this one this year. It'll probably be, if I don't enjoy this, it's gonna be the last Holly Black book I read. If I do enjoy it, I might try some of her others. We'll see, because from what I heard, uh, she's doing it more in her Cruel Prince world. And maybe it'll be good again to me. I don't know. I know a lot of people enjoy it, just not my thing. Really hoping, high hopes for this one. Next one on my 2021 reading list is the 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Now, if you were anywhere in the bookish community last year, you saw the hype around this book. Like everybody was talking about it. Everyone was excited about it. You saw it everywhere there for a few months. And of course, I give in to hype really easily. And I bought it and I was really excited to read it. And I actually said it on my shelf beside of my Holly Black books and there it has sat for months and months. I did try and read it like the other one. I tried to read it last fall but I was in really bad reading slump and I didn't get much of anything read. I really want to know what everyone was excited about with this book. It is one of the few YA fantasies I have that I still am super interested in and I had every intention of reading it last year. I just didn't get around to it. Another thing that sparks my interest in this book is I I don't like big books like 400 pages is like the max unless I'm super interested in something and this one comes in at under 400 pages so that's another reason I really want to read it. I'm not one of those big book people. I don't big books and I cannot lie no that's not me. Give me give me the little skinny ones because I have no attention span. It's hard to concentrate on a story for that long. I really want to read this. I'm hoping to get to it before summer starts because it feels like a spring book to me, a spring or a fall book. Like just looking at the cover, it feels really springy. I don't know. I'm not gonna try and tell you what this is about because as I've proven on so many occasions, I'm really bad at describing things. Hoping to read this one soon. The next one I wanna talk about is The Silver Serpents by Roshani Chakshi. Now this is book two in her Gilded Wolves series. I read the first book and it came out in 2019, I want to say. But I, I really enjoyed it. A lot of people compared it to uh, Six of Crows, which I didn't really understand. I didn't like Six of Crows. Uh, there's a hot take for you today. I didn't like Six of Crows. So when people started comparing Gilded Wolves to Six of Crows, I'm like, well, I'm not going to read that. But I read it because, you know, I give in to hype really easily. And I actually really enjoyed it. So I bought this as a little prize for myself last year during, uh, you know, COVID depressive slump. And look, look at this. I want to read it before it starts getting warm out because this looks like a beautiful wintry read. I only got it in December. So like it's not been on my own TBR for a while, but I still want to read it. So, hey, let's let's do that. I truly don't understand why they compared it to Six of Crows. I didn't see any, I didn't see the comparisons other than people were stealing things. Like, that's it. And people steal things in a lot of books. Like, why, why do we compare it all to Six of Crows? I mean, really, find something else. Find another hill. The fifth book on my list of books I want to read in 2021 that I meant to read in 2020 and didn't go around to. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morena. Garcia. Now I purchased myself this book as a present after a really bad day at work and I wanted to get myself something for getting through it and that seemed like a perfectly reasonable thing to do at the time. Got this, I had every intention of reading it during spooky season, October, yay. I actually ended up reading about a hundred pages of it and then I didn't read anything for the, like, the next two months because <laughs> that's just how 2020 went, right? This is a gothic horror one of my favorite authors ever is Edgar Allan Poe, who most people, I won't say most people, because I think that's a little too overarching. A lot of people consider the king of gothic horror, and I love Poe, so I really want to give this novel a try. I would love to try goth more gothic horror in general, and this one sounds like a great read. 
A lot of people say that this is a really slow paced book, but if you've read any gothic horror, like they're not usually a fast paced kind of thing. So that's, you know, I feel like that's to be expected, but I am really looking forward to this. I might put it off until October this year again, and then actually read it. We'll see, but I really, I definitely want to get to this and look at this cover. This is another one that's just absolutely gorgeous. I love this cover. Come on, focus. Look at it. This is beautiful. And this is set in 1920s, I want to say. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure this is set in the 1920s and it starts off in Mexico City. And then our main character who's concerned with a cousin whose letters have been off-putting. Uh, her cousin had gotten married to some fellow and moved out into the country. And the letters she's been getting from her cousin have been very odd and strange and she's worried. So she goes and sees what's up and then the gothic horror starts and I'm really looking forward to actually finishing this one. Like I said, I'm probably going to put it off until October again because we all need spooky season reads. The sixth book I want to discuss with you today is A Sword in the Stars by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. Now this book and I had a bit of a journey in 2020. It came out in April. I had pre-ordered a copy and the authors and publisher were hosting a pre-order campaign where if you submitted your proof of purchase, you would get a signed book plate and an LGBTQIA plus pen with swords crossed on it. The pen is over there, otherwise I'd show you. This book came out in April. If you recall April, everything was shut down. You couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. Like getting groceries was even just a task of monumental proportions. The authors told us on social media that the pre-order items were in a warehouse, which had been closed due to COVID. And then I never heard anything else about it again. And I didn't, I didn't want to read this book. I know this sounds weird. I didn't want to read it until I got the signed book plate. I don't know why. I didn't want to read it until I had the signed book plate. Miraculously, out of the blue, in early December, look what got here. Look at this. Ooh, focus, focus on that. Look, it finally, the signed book plate finally came in. And what got me is the signed book plate and the pen showed up right after James Patterson did the Jimmy Patterson Press announced that they weren't gonna be published anymore, publishing books anymore. So yeah, I had completely given up on ever getting my pre-order merge. But it finally came in and I, I, I'm definitely gonna read this one this year. It is the sequel to a sci-fi YA LGBTQIA uh, Arthurian retelling in space. If that doesn't make you want to read it, I don't know what does. The first one's called Once in Future. It's an excellent book. It has a beautiful cover too. I've talked about it on here before. I mean, it's great. I definitely want to read this. I'm going to read it this year. I was just waiting for my book plate because that's what I do. The next book on this list brings me nothing but shame. We all know what this is. I don't need to tell you what this is. <sighs> this book came out January, 2018. I had pre-ordered it in 2017 and it showed up at my door and I was thrilled and excited and I couldn't wait to read it. I mentioned to you earlier and prior in other videos and on my blog, if you've ever looked at that, I don't like big books. She comes in at over 600 pages. Like, <laughs> it's intimidating. And look, you can even see, I tried to read it again last year. I got about 150 pages into it, I think. Yeah, I was on page 138. I just, she's thick. And I just, it's intimidating to me. I don't, I'm, I'm, I have trouble with big books, but I absolutely love Pierce Brown's the first three books in the saga, so the original Red Rising trilogy, I've read them several times. I love them. I love the characters. I love the story. I love the unpredictability of it. It's a great series. 
so why haven't I read this? The last couple of years, this has been on my, I'm definitely going to read this this year, TBRs that I, I do. I mean, this is the first one here as a video. But it just, she thick. And then after this one, I'm sure you are aware, is Dark Iron, which is 100 pages longer than this one. So even if I do read this one this year, how long is it going to be until I read Dark Iron? I mean, really. She's, I could hurt people with it. I think it's even longer than the Priority of the Orange Tree, which I thought was my longest book. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably Dark Age. So maybe you and I together can go on the journey of reading Iron Gold this year and we'll see what happens, right? It'll be great. I know, what gets me is I know the story's gonna be great. I know I'm gonna love it. I know I will absolutely adore this book. It's just so big. I don't like that. Mm. So yeah, those were my TBR leftovers from 2020. Those are the seven books that I hope that I'm going to read by the end of the year. Even if I do one, what, not quite every other month, but close, I'll still be able to finish it. But Iron Gold, man, she might, she might get me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna read those books this year. I will, in my weekly reading vlogs, I will, uh, if you want to, you can watch me read them at some point. Who knows when I'll get to it? Cause like I said, I don't have a set TBR. Just when I feel like picking something up, but I do want to get to Silver Serpents pretty soon. Cause it's wintry looking and it's the right time of year for that. Cause there's snow outside and yeah, reading that in the summer doesn't sound like a great thing. That's all for today. Uh, subscribe if you feel like it. If you don't feel like it, that's fine too. You can follow me on my social medias. They're down there. You know where that is. So yeah, talk to you soon.